Now, Moscow says uh, the new sanctions are a double-edged sword and uh, will increase costs for European consumers. As ABC News correspondent Rosie Bichard is following these developments for us in Brussels and joins us now. Rosie, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, talk us through this new sanctions package. What's the latest? Well, this new sanctions package, the sixth sanctions package to be imposed on Moscow by the European Union is seen as really the toughest, the toughest round of sanctions the EU has tried to impose on Moscow so far. That's because it wades into that very controversial territory of energy imports. This sanctions package foresees a total ban on imports of oil from Russia. However, what we're looking at is a phased in ban. So within six months, banning all oil, crude oil imports, and then by the end of the year, refined oil products. Now it doesn't stop there. It also looks at cutting more Russian banks from the SWIFT international payment system and targeting more individuals that the EU accuses of war crimes in uh, cities like Bucha in Ukraine with asset freezes and travel bans. They also propose to ban more Russian broadcasters from EU airwaves. Now what happens next? The European Commission, the bloc executive that's headquartered in the building behind me, has presented these proposals. We saw Ursula von der Leyen doing that in the European Parliament today, but it's not up to her. It now goes to all 27 EU member states to debate and discuss those final details. And there is likely going to be some political debate there precisely because different countries have different levels of dependence on Russia. Without unanimous backing, these sanctions simply cannot come into force. So a couple of days to come likely of behind closed doors bargaining among these 27 countries to try and get the necessary consensus to push this new sanctions package over the line. Now, Russia is already talking about, uh, you know, these sanctions being a double edged sword. What else have they said? Well, we heard a bit of it from Stuart there, Russia saying this is going to increase costs for European consumers. And that is something that is, is echoed not just in Russia, but also in other parts of the continent. That's a likely outcome here. We might see energy prices increase further. We might see inflation increase. And some analysts are even predicting that could lead to social unrest within the bloc. Now, Russia has been threatening to block exports to what it calls unfriendly countries. And we recently saw how we willing Moscow is to follow through on retaliatory measures. Last week, it cut gas supplies to two EU members, Poland and Bulgaria, because they refused to pay their gas bills in rubles, the Russian currency, and not in euros. That demand from Russia to pay in euros was largely seen as a bid to circumvent previous EU sanctions. And those countries are now without Russian oil. They've managed to find some alternative supplies in the short term, but these kind of risks are are certainly something that other EU countries are reflecting on, wondering if they will be next and wondering how Moscow will retaliate. Mm, and I mean, we spoke about this earlier on where you said, I mean, this is the sixth round and we know the process that is going to unfold now, as you say, debates are going to be held and, 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 and then we'll know and get a sense of what's going to happen going forward. But I'm keen to find out from you, looking at the packages that have been, you know, put out already, are there fears that uh, sanctions simply aren't working because we're seeing the war continue? There are fears that sanctions are not working. However, the European Commission, the bloc's executive, really argues that the goal of sanctions is not to change things overnight and that the goal of them is certainly not to achieve a regime change in Russia, but rather to cripple the, the Kremlin's ability to continue financing this war. Now, we are seeing impacts, for example, on the Russian economy, also impacts on the EU economy. And I think particularly with this new round of sanctions, which is currently under debate, there are particular concerns of the fallout. If the if this new round of sanctions sees oil prices increase, which I think is already the case, then 
because this is a phased in approach, we thought with six months to go until there will be this total ban on oil imports, that could give Russia time to find new buyers and perhaps sell that oil at even bigger price and then have more money to finance that conflict in Ukraine. However, we have had real strong push from some EU countries, for example, the Baltics, Lithuania, Estonia and Poland, saying they want to see these tough sanctions in place because the alternative is the EU directly essentially contributing to the Kremlin's coffers and therefore its ability to keep going on with this war in Ukraine. The EU does not want to be involved in that. However, it has still not moved to sanction Russian gas. That's an area which the EU still remains heavily dependent on Russia. It's much more difficult to replace, for example, than oil supplies. So that's where we might see more debate in future, even beyond looking into further sanctions packages. Will the EU move into that much more controversial territory of gas supplies. There is a big plan in place within the bloc mm. to try and radically reduce dependence on Russian fossil fuels. They're looking to different suppliers, but it's something that simply cannot be changed overnight due to this legacy of long-term dependence on Moscow. All right, uh, Rosie, it looks like it's a long way ahead still um, as we then look to see what happens post those discussions. Uh, that's Rosie Pichard. She's the SABC News correspondent who has coming to us live from Brussels.